Hi, in this tutorial, I will show you how to import a complex mesh into Phoenix for finite element simulations in Phoenix. So I will focus on meshes created with software package Simvascular, which is a very popular open source software for creating uh, finite element models of blood flow in arteries, and it's widely used in the blood flow modeling community. And it has a, the mesher uses TetGen for creating the mesh. So, but so I'll focus in this tutorial on the meshes that are output by the free software Simvascular, but I'll also talk about briefly how you can extend this code to uh, uh, other uh, meshes. Uh, okay, great. So, so this is the the code that we have uh, that we want to uh, go over today. So, um, uh, basically, you don't really need to change much in the code. All you need to do is you need to set these parameters at the bottom of the code. So, I'll walk you through all these uh, things you need to set to run this code, and I'll talk about the output that it creates and how you can use that for uh, Phoenix. Okay, so the first argument tells you that this comes from Simascular because the Simascular IDs uh, start from one, but we want it to start from zero in XML format that Phoenix needs. So we just have this tag here so we can subtract one and you know, make the node ID arrays start from uh, zero. So if you are having a mesh that doesn't start from one, the index you can um, you can uh, basically set this to zero. So for example, if you're generating IDs from Paraview. Then what we do here is that we have a bunch of faces, our boundary conditions. So an inlet file, a wall file, and in this case, two outlets. So if I navigate to the folder, so this is the folder mesh that Simascular has created for my model. Under the mesh surfaces, I have an inlet, an inlet, and two outlets, and a no-slip wall. So if I open them in Paraview, this is my inlet mesh. So I can uh, show you the mesh, so it looks something like that. Then I have one outlet, I have another outlet. So these are all triangulated uh, surface meshes. And then I have a wall. So the wall in this case is just a no-slip wall. So you can see it's hollow. It doesn't have the inlets and outlets. So this is the, the nodes that I will be tagging for a no-slip boundary condition, for example, in this uh, CFT simulation that I did with this uh, carotid archery model. And then I also have, so I have these four files that I need uh, in my mesh conversion. So these are four uh, of my boundary conditions, one inlet, two outlets, and one wall. And then I also have a mesh complete file that Simascular creates for me, and that's my entire mesh. So this contains a 3D mesh information. So it's a, not a triangular mesh, but a tetrahedral volumetric mesh. So in this case, if I go to information, you can see that it has 1.4 million elements. Okay, great. So now coming back to the code. So the first thing that I do is that I get the node list from these surface meshes. So I call this function and for inlet wall and the two outlets, I get the node list and I save them some temporary dot dot files here. So if I go to the function, get node list, the only thing is that I tell it that these, uh, the readers that I set, select for my VTK, code to read is a VTK XML polydata re reader. So this is what I said here. So if you have a different type of VTK file, you can define that appropriate reader here. And I should mention that this code is a VTK code. So you need to install VTK on your Python. So you can run this and it's written in Python 3. But I think you just need to change the print commands if you want to use Python 2. Okay, so that's the first step. So I get, my, uh, get the, the boundary Node, nodes. And then what I do is that I want to tag them. I want to create this B, bc node facets.xml file. So this XML file, which I want to create as an output uh, by running this function, will be the uh, will contain the tags that I need for my boundary condition. And uh, I can use it in Phoenix. So in this case, the input to this function is the entire mesh. So I need to give it the entire mesh. So in this case, the mesh complete.vtu. So that's the entire 3D mesh that I have. So I read this as input. I read this array containing all my node files that I created in the previous step. And then my output is bc node facets.xml. And this XML file is what Phoenix needs for tagging the boundary mesh. So if I go to the node list to facet domains function here, um, you can see that I've set specific readers. So I've set XML read true. So I'm here and I've also set the mesh type to VTU. So I'm reading a VTK XML unstructured grid reader. So if your mesh type is different, different type of VTK file, you can set the appropriate reader here. 
I will be creating another series of tutorials on BTK and how to write BTK code. So I'll pretty much be explaining a lot of things happening in this BTK code in another series of tutorials. Um, okay, so that's gonna be my boundary condition tag. And then the final thing I need is the entire 3D mesh. So for that entire uh, 3D mesh, I again read the uh, mesh complete.btu file and then I output the volume mesh.xml. So by running this code, I will get as output a bunch of dot dat files, which are temporary. I don't really need them, and two XML files that are considered pretty large XML files. And these two XML files are what you will read and use in your in your Phoenix code. So the BC node facets file is what you use in um in uh. Uh, for tagging boundary conditions, and the volume mesh file is the file that you use in creating a 3D mesh. So I should mention, when you want to use the BC node uh, facets file, the order that you put these boundary faces here, so in this case, first I put the inlet, then the wall, outlet one, outlet two. So these will be the same order of tags that you can call in your Phoenix code. So in this case, inlet will be tagged as one, the wall will be tagged as two, outlet one will be tagged as three, and outlet two will be tagged as four. So I can use this one, two, three, four here. Okay, so then um, a, another thing to point out is that you know for running this code, all you need to do is that you just call Python, and then call the py file, and all these uh, functions will be will run uh, sequentially, so you'll, which is order you really need. And then, um, as uh, another thing I should point out is that, um, so now the question is how do I, if, if you have other types of meshes, what should you do? So if you have a, another type of mesh, um, you that's not necessarily from Cmascular, you can either modify this to, if you need to, well, first you need to really understand your mesh, that how your mesh is written, where is your coordinates, connectivity, all those information. So you can modify this code for your own purposes. And, but another option would be that you use Paraview. So basically you load your mesh in Paraview and you clean it up there. And then you what you do is that you generate, uh, uh, you use the generate ID filters, as I explained here, and then you extract surfaces and then you get them one by one and you save all these different VTP files. So it's something similar to what I have here. But first you need to generate the IDs and then you know, separate them. And then uh, you do something similar here. But I think it's probably a better idea if you write, if you modify this for your own format of your mesh. And if you do that, uh, uh, if you have a code that converts your mesh to an appropriate format for Phoenix or XML format for Phoenix, please do share that with us. That will be something very interesting. So for example, if you have something similar for ANSYS or Star CCM or other uh, yeah, CFD solvers. So then one more thing I need to explain, which I'll do in the next uh, tutorial is that, okay, so I have this now for my mesh, but what if I have a series of velocity files, like uh, VTK velocity files that uh, are generated as a result of my CFT simulation, how do I get them as an input to my, uh, to my um, uh, Phoenix uh, simulation? So I will talk about that in the next, uh, a tutorial where I talk about doing a complex mass transport problem. So that complex mass transport problem, the velocity is an input to that vection diffusion equation. And I'll show you at the beginning of that tutorial how you can also read the velocity files and convert them to an appropriate format for your Phoenix code. So you can use velocity as an input to your advection diffusion equation, or this could be really any parameter that's an input, any spatial temporal field that's an input to your PDE. So you can have it as an input uh, to your PDE in the format that Phoenix understands. So we'll talk about that in the next uh, tutorial.